So in the previous video, we went ahead and created a API request that actually gave us all of the currencies that we were looking for. As you can see in the console, we have all of them down here. And as you can see also in the UI preview that we just have a hello world. So this video is going to be based on changing that to an actual display that we can use for our currencies. So let's go ahead and add a few more modifications to our program. And to get started, we're going to type in at state var, and we're going to create something called a currency list, which is just going to equal a list of string. And we also want to provide a focus state, which we're going to be using for our submit button so that when the user clicks on submit, the text field or actually the keyboard will be dismissed automatically. So private var input is focused and that will be of type Boolean. Now to simplify the API request, I decided to go ahead and make a function which is called make request, and this will take care of cleaning the data and retrieving the data. So we're going to add two fields. One is going to be called show all, which will be something we use if we want to show all of the currencies or just selected ones. And we're going to go ahead and create a currencies to show list, which is going to be of type string and inside here you want to provide all the currencies that you do want to show. So for this example we can go ahead and type in USD, GBP or Euro. And of course if you want the user to be able to select the ones they want to show you're going to have to find a way to insert the values inside here so that the user can do that. But I'll show you later. Let's also go ahead and close the preview so we have some more space and create a block. And also I forgot to mention that at focus state is only available for iOS 15. So we're going to have to add a slight modification to our program. So open the sidebar, click on your folder and click on the currency converter. And here we can go ahead and click on currency converter. And then I believe we have to go to build settings and change this to iOS 15 as the iOS deployment target. Then we can go back to our content view and we should be able to get rid of that error. Then we can go ahead and close the sidebar once again and continue with the function. So the next thing we will do is take this API request that we created on up here and paste it inside the make request. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and create a temporary list. So temp list is going to equal a list of string. And then we need to go ahead and loop through each one of the currencies we got in the array. So for currency in currencies dot rates, we're going to go ahead and create a filter. So if show all is true, then we're just going to go ahead and type in template dot append, and we need to interpolate. So here we're going to do backslash currency dot key and backslash string because we want to format the decimal value to two decimal places. Otherwise it becomes unmanageable. So we want to format percent dot two F, which is two decimal places, the currency dot value. Because as you might remember inside the JSON response, we get a dictionary as a response. So the key is the country code and the value is the actual value. So we have to use those values accordingly. Then we can go ahead and create an else if check, which is going to check if the currencies dot contains the currency dot key, then we're going to go ahead and add it to the list as well. So just go ahead and copy this and paste it inside. So the first check is going to show all of the currencies. And the second check is going to show only the selected currencies if this one is set to false. And then we want to sort them in alphabetical order. So we're going to go ahead and type in temp list dot sort. And finally, we need to set the currency list to this current list. So below we can go ahead and type in currency list dot self equals temp list. And that will take care of updating our currency list. But let's go ahead and make sure that this works by printing the temp list. And on up here, we can go ahead and call this function. So make request and we will set show all to false. So it should only show us three currencies at the moment. And we're receiving an error here because this right here should be currency and not currencies. But with that being done, we can go ahead and run the program. And it's going to say hello world. But when we go back, you're going to notice that 
besides getting the entire array of all of these currencies, we will also get the filtered array at the bottom. Now we can continue and start creating the actual UI for the currency app. So let's go ahead and go down to the body and create a VStack. So VStack, and the first thing we will take care of is the logo. So HStack, and inside here we'll type in text and currencies with a font of dot .system, size, and 30, followed by dot .bold. And we should actually run the preview so we can see what we're doing. Then we will go ahead and add an image of system name, and it's going to be euro sign dot circle dot fill. But it looks quite small, so let's go ahead and change the font size to 30. So we can just copy that and paste it right under. And we're going to change the foreground color to dot blue. So it looks pretty nice now. We have a small logo that represents a currency app. Below the H stack, we can go ahead and create a list, which is going to take a for each loop. And inside here, we need to specify that it will come from the currency list with an ID of backslash dot self, because we have not provided one. And inside here, we can type in currency in, and we will just create a text field that says currency. And we need to add a colon here. And so that we can actually see the result, we're going to have to go ahead and call dot on up here one more time. And inside here, we will just call make request with show all set to true. And you should get a list of currencies. And in fact, if we run the app, we're going to get a whole list of currencies that convert from USD 100 to the rest of the world currencies as you can see over here. Now, the last thing we want to do is create a way for the user to specify what they want to convert, which is quite simple because now we have a function called make request and we also have the values that we can change. So the last field we have to create is another VStack. So VStack and inside here, we need to go ahead and create a rectangle with a frame of height 8.0. So this is going to be kind of like a bottom line with a foreground color of dot blue and an opacity of 0 0.90. So now you can see a blue line at the bottom that separates the list from the bottom of the app. Now let's go ahead and add the text fields. So text field, which will say enter an amount and the text is going to be set to the binding variable of input. We'll also add a dot padding and a background color, so background of color dot gray with an opacity of 0 0.10. We also want to add a corner radius of 20.0 and another padding. Then we also want to go ahead and specify the keyboard type. So that's going to be set to decimal because it is a number pad and dot focused is going to be set to the binding variable of input is focused. Then for the most part of it, we can just go ahead and copy this text field and paste it right under and change it with a few minor touches such as enter an amount will change to enter a currency. And here we will change this to the base currency. Then of course we want to add the focused, which is input is focused. And we're going to leave it at that and we don't really need to do anything to the input text because the program is smart enough to know that lowercase USD is also the same as uppercase USD. The JSON data will not change based on how the user changes the camel case of the input. Everything we've done so far is fine. Of course, as a bonus challenge, you can go ahead and turn this into a selector, which lists out all of the currencies that you can convert it into. But for this simple tutorial, of course, I'm going to leave it as a text input. But the final field is a button. And this button is going to say convert. And what it's going to do is make a request. And it's going to set show all to true. Or actually, if you want it to not show everything, go ahead and click on false. And enter an array of the currencies that you do want to show. And I believe you have to type in currencies here, actually. Yeah, so it's going to tell you currency and you have to provide the string or the array of string that you want to show. 
And for this example, we can close that and type in DKK, SEK, and NOK, which are Scandinavian currencies. But of course, you can enter whatever currencies you want. And this will be the custom list that hides all the other ones. Then we also have to go down and set input is focused and set that to false. Plus, I want to provide a padding for this button. So it's going to look like that. If we click on the live preview and we click on convert, it's only going to show us the specified values as I mentioned earlier. So as another bonus challenge, find a way to let the user input the only values they want to see and make that an option so that they can display it on the screen like this. But otherwise, if we set this to true, it's going to show all of the currencies no matter what we do. So let's go ahead and actually run the entire program. As you can see, as soon as the app starts, it converts 100 USD to the rest of the world currencies. We can also go ahead and change this to, let's say, 50.5 and change USD to DKK and click on enter and convert. And as you can see, we've successfully converted 50 crowns into the rest of the world's currencies. So it's a very simple app and it shows you how you can actually use another API request to create a live conversion. And of course, this can be very useful one day in the future if you want to offer multiple options to your users in your app to make some purchases or to even just see the latest currency exchange. But with that being said, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.